Today we're talking apples. We're going to look at some delicious, simple apple recipes for you to try at home, including how to make an amazing pastry lattice for your pie. We'll check out this really cool kitchen gadget, but we're going to start with some apple life hacks. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell if you want to be notified whenever I launch a new video. If you're making up a lunchbox for later, you can pre-slice an apple like this, then reassemble it and hold it together with an elastic band. This will stop air getting to the cut surfaces and prevent it from going brown. Later on, when you open it up, it's nice and fresh and ready for eating. You can do a similar thing by removing the core from the centre of an apple, then turning it on its side and slicing it up. Slide the core back in and hold it together again with an elastic band. When you go for lunch later, just pull out the core and you've got nice fresh apple slices. You can display an apple in a really cool way by putting a slice around the base like this. Then cutting off three pieces from the top down to the line. Next we need to slice these up into nice thin strips and sit them back onto the apple. Do this with all three. Then fan them out like this. Pretty cool, huh? We get this really interesting apple display. Perfect for a centrepiece or something. For the next one, we need to take a slice off the side of an apple like this. Then start cutting it into thin slices like this. We need to go about two thirds of the way up. Then remove the end piece and the first piece on this side too. Next, stand it up, then take a toothpick and push it through like this. We're going to poke this into an offcut of apple to help it stand up. Then fan out the pieces to make an awesome apple spiral. It looks great! You can surprise a loved one by using a heart-shaped cookie cutter to help create a heart shape into the side of an apple. I'm doing this with a red apple and a green, then swapping them over to make a really sweet gift. Or you could do it on two different sides of the same apple. For the next one, we're going to take our apple and cut it into nice thin strips all the way up. Next, lay them onto a baking tray and place them in the oven. Bake them until they're dried out and starting to crisp. You can sprinkle over some icing sugar and a pinch of cinnamon and serve them as delicious snacks. So, have you ever seen or used one of these gadgets? I thought I'd give one a go. It suctions down onto the work surface to hold it firm while you use it. Then you hold open this lever and slide back this bar. Push an apple onto the three prongs and release this cutting arm. Then twist the handle, it slowly winds the apple forward and when it hits the blade, it starts to peel it. Keep turning it until the apple is all the way out the other side. It reminds me a little of peeling an apple with a drill bit. By poking the apple on the end, then holding a peeler against it as you rotate the drill. This does actually work really well. But the great thing about this gadget is, for a start, the peel is amazingly neat. And when we pull the apple off, it's actually also cored it straight down the middle. And it's also sliced it too, into this amazing spiral. Pretty crazy, huh? It's a really cool gadget, and there's a link in the description if you want to buy one. This is great for cooking. With just a few slices of a knife, we have these small chopped up pieces of apple. I'm going to use these to make an apple sauce for a pie. I started by melting down 50 grams of butter in a pan, then I added my chopped up pieces of apple and I let it all cook and stew for a few minutes. Then add one tablespoon of flour and mix it in. Next I poured in half a cup of water three tablespoons of sugar and some ground cinnamon. Then give it a stir and leave it to stew for a few minutes. You'll get this amazing thick rich apple sauce. 
This apple gadget is also really useful for making larger slices. I spread them out into this pie dish. You could of course line the dish with pastry first if you like. Then I poured over my homemade apple sauce. Next I'm going to show you how to make a pastry lattice on top. I'm using pre-made shop-bought pastry which I cut into strips about an inch wide. You'll need quite a few strips. And if you like, you can use a pizza cutter to slice it. Then take a strip and lay it over the centre of the dish. Put the second one about an inch away from it and the third one. Do this on both sides so it looks like this. To make a lattice, we need to fold back the centre strip and the two outside ones. Then lay a new strip over like this. Fold back over these strips then peel back these two, like this. Lay over another strip, then repeat the process. Do the same thing up the other side as well. And we should have this awesome looking lattice. You can tear off any excess and make a ring around the edge. And I'm using the prongs of a fork to decorate it. Finally, brush it over with some beaten egg, place it on a tray, and it's ready to bake. We'll come back to this later to see how it looks, but you can also make an apple pie inside of an apple. I cut off the top, then hollowed out this apple, filled it with some of the apple mix we made earlier, then top it with a crumble topping. When you've made enough of them, just place them in the oven. I made the crumble topping by dicing up some butter adding porridge oats, a little flour, some sugar, then mixing it all together. This makes a delicious crumbly topping for your apples. When they're baked, they're ready to serve. And they go great with ice cream. You can also use the apple filling we made earlier to make a strudel by spooning it out like this onto a sheet of puff pastry. Then, if you like, add a few blackberries. Next, we need to put slices about an inch apart all the way along the bottom of the puff pastry and the top. Then fold them over like this so they cross in the middle. Work your way from one side to the other and fold over the ends. I placed it on a baking tray, brushed over some beaten egg and popped it into the oven. When it's golden and baked, you can dust over some icing sugar and it's ready to serve. It goes great with ice cream and the blackberries give it a lovely bit of additional flavour. You can make amazing apple roses by chopping an apple in half then coring it, slice it into nice thin strips, then place them into a bowl, add a little lemon juice and water and pop them into the microwave for 5 minutes to make them nice and soft. Next we need to take some strips of puff pastry and spread on a little apricot jam. Then drain the apples and layer them over the edge of the pastry, like this. Fold over the bottom half and carefully roll it up like this to make an amazing apple rose. Place it into a lightly buttered cupcake tray and bake them in the oven. When they're ready and golden, dust over some icing sugar and they're ready to serve. And finally, let's have a look at the pie. Mine took about 35 minutes to be golden and baked all the way through. You can leave it to sit and cool, then dust it with icing sugar and it's ready to cut out a slice. It smells amazing and it goes perfectly with ice cream. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like some of my others. You can click on the links to take a look. Have fun, stay safe and as always, thanks for watching.